Everybody wants the benefits of a long fast, but dagnabbit, nobody actually wants to fast. Just kidding, you probably enjoy fasting, but let's paint a scenario for a second. Let's say you wanted to do a 48 hour fast. You wanted all the benefits of a 48 hour fast, but you maybe didn't actually want to fast for 48 hours. Well, arguably, you could do a 24 hour fast and then consume certain fasting mimicking foods to sort of extend the benefits of your 24 hour fast. The only true way to get a benefit of a 48 hour fast is to literally do a 48 hour fast. But fasting mimicking foods are kind of interesting because they allow us to reap the benefits of a fast in some ways without actually fasting. But they're not the end all be all, so don't get me wrong here. I just really wanna provide a solution for people that wanna sort of, let's just call it, extend the benefits of their fast past their fasting period. You see, there's a lot of different benefits that we're getting from fasting, and it's happening from different directions. Some of it's happening from pure caloric restriction, some of it's happening from fatty acid metabolism and utilization in terms of the signaling, some of it's happening from autophagy, some of it's happening from the downregulation of growth signaling. So what we're focusing on with eating specific fasting mimicking foods is we're eating foods that still continue to turn down pro-growth signaling. Okay, pro-growth signaling is going to be like insulin or like IGF, okay, insulin uh, like growth factor, and also mTOR. These are all growth signals that signal cells to grow, to proliferate, okay? We want to turn those off. It doesn't mean that we're literally fasting. It means that we're eating foods that have less of a growth signal. So that means we're gonna eat foods that have low amino acid signaling, so it doesn't signal insulin. Uh, we're gonna eat foods that will reduce IGF-1. Then we're gonna consume foods that lessen glucose signaling. So in sense, our body is kind of fasting, but not literally fasting. So let's just jump right into the foods that are usually going to work. And full disclaimer, you're not gonna be making beautiful meals, okay? This is like ways for you to just extend your fast. You're not gonna have a gourmet meal with what I'm about to list out. Okay, macadamia nuts are technically a food that would be fasting mimicking friendly. Better yet, macadamia nut butter just because it's easier to masticate and less actual mechanical digestion so you can emulate the fast a little bit easier. It has to do with the palmitoleic acid. It has to do with the fact that there's very little carbs whatsoever in a macadamia nut. Okay, flax is probably the next best one. Flax oil or flax seeds, if you can really crush them really well, or ground flax. The reason behind that is because of the kind of fiber that's in it, it creates these specific short chain fatty acids that trigger pro-growth signaling to kind of slow down a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of tons of flax, but in moderate amounts, it's fine. Olives are another one, okay? You eat pure olives, that way you're getting the hydroxytyrosol, you're getting some of the fibers and you're getting some of the fats. Pure unsweetened dark chocolate, like no sweeteners, not even adding like a fake sweetener or not natural sweetener. Pure unsweetened dark chocolate. We wanna reduce any kind of sweet taste that you're getting in. Algal oil or cod liver oil are also very, very good. Okay, these are all going to reduce those pro-growth signals. Algal oil specifically because it's so rich in omega-3s and it is basically a plant-based form of omega-3, very rich in DHA. Anyhow, different story for a different day. MCT oil, okay, this can actually send you deeper into this fasting mimicking state. Now remember, you're not literally fasting. Calories break fasts, period. But when you're consuming certain things, you can at least turn off components of the metabolism. So there's two different directions that we go. Okay, there's the anti-pro-growth signal, okay, like trying to consume foods that lessen the IGF response, but then there's a different direction. Then we can consume some foods that induce autophagy or compounds that induce autophagy. Autophagy is the natural kind of cell recycling that occurs, and it implies that we're in a fasted state. So we can sort of mimic a fast by eating certain foods that don't signal things, but then also by consuming foods that do signal autophagy. So this next list is more about the autophagy. A lot of the foods that I listed before, like the macadamia nuts, the flax, the olives, the dark chocolate, stuff like that, uh, if you want to use Thrive Market down below, uh, you can check out the lists that I compile with Thrive Market for groceries. Uh, they're what I use just to get my pantry staples for intermittent fasting, for keto, all that stuff. They're an online membership-based grocery store, so they deliver it directly to your doorstep. There's a special link down below. Not only are they a big supporter of this channel, they've made it so that when I'm traveling, I can be able to consume the food that I want to be able to consume. I can ship a box to where I'm traveling, to the Airbnb, or it's just super easy, highly convenient, and very, very economical. So check them out down below. 
Okay, so this first autophagy food is going to be green tea. Now, you could consume this during a fast, but if you consume it after your fast, along with the foods I mentioned before, you get a little bit of an extension with it, okay? Now, green tea, because of what's called EGCG, it induces autophagy via the AMPK pathway. So basically, it tells the liver to increase the phosphorylation of what's called AMP, okay, adenosine monophosphate kinase. So what this is doing is it's making it so that your liver thinks that you don't have food coming in, so it upregulates all the processes associated with autophagy and fasting. There's a study that was published in Biomedical and Environmental Sciences that found that EGCG also alleviated the autophagy inhibition effect that occurs normally when you eat. So meaning if you are consuming food and autophagy is inhibited, you're stopping that. So in other words, you're stopping the stopping of autophagy. Next one is ginger, and ginger has become a huge, huge friend of mine as I've been seeing more research, specifically in something called 6-shogol, which is an active component of ginger, and it does some wild stuff. You see, it was found in some studies to inhibit cell proliferation by inducing specific cellular death, but not apoptosis necessarily. And what that means is in studies that were looking at specific carcinomas, they were finding that 6-shogol would trigger targeted cellular death via autophagic flux. That means that we're triggering autophagy down very specific pathways. I don't want to go down kind of a carcinoma route because that's not what this channel is necessarily about. The point is, is ginger and 6-shogol have powerful effects within this category. But other studies have found that it also can affect mTOR phosphorylation, meaning mTOR is the signal that tells our body to grow to make ourselves anabolic the opposite of what's happening during a fast, right? We're not anabolic, we're not building during a fast, we're breaking down. So mTOR is not necessarily what we want at that point in time. mTOR is not bad, just not, we don't want it when we're fasting. So if we can stop mTOR phosphorylation, that means that we're stopping the downstream path and the downstream signaling that occurs from mTOR to trigger growth. Basically, 6-shogol and ginger stops growth. Then we get into turmeric is another thing to add. So all these things you're eating, adding turmeric into the mix. The Journal of Pharmacological Science has published that via the A549 pathway in uh, lung carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, they found that they had a reduction, again, in mTOR and an induction of autophagy. So more autophagic flux within specific adenocarcinomas. What that means is that within uh, patients that are dealing with lung carcinoma, they found that turmeric seems to have an effect there. I'm not making any claims here. I'm just saying we see, again, specific selected autophagic flux. And then lastly, within the autophagy category, reishi. Now, reishi is an adaptogenic mushroom compound that is very, very powerful at reducing mitogen-activated uh, kinases. So basically, reducing autophagy through a different route. I know it's complicated. I'm just trying to condense it as much as I can. Now, uh, if there is some kind of carbohydrate that you could have during this fasting mimicking protocol, I would say it's likely going to be something like honey. I'm not the biggest fan of honey because fructose is not necessarily my friend most of the time, but fructose does not trigger an insulin spike. So the whole idea is we're trying to reduce insulin spikes, trying to reduce IGF-1. So honey could technically be allowed, but in my opinion, why? If you don't need it, don't have it. Anyhow, so this is how you can extend the effects of your fast. Do a 24-hour fast, then do 24 hours of consuming some of these foods at less than maybe six, 700 calories, and you at least get an extended benefit without actually being fasted. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.